Okay then, let's start enhancing our understanding of R. I assume that you already have R and R Studio installed. Just in case you've not got it installed or you've switched your computer or something like that, please use the information on this slide to go and install R first from cloud.rproject.org. And of course, you're going to install this version suitable for your operating system, uh, be it Windows or Mac or Linux. Uh, and then after having installed R, go ahead and install R Studio and uh, you know from this location and uh, you know after this you don't have to really touch R at all you just run R Studio and R Studio will take care of interfacing with R right as you know we are using R Studio as our interface to R okay uh, so in case you don't have R and R Studio properly configured do that and we'll get started right away Let's quickly refresh our understanding of how RStudio works. I'm going to give you a quick uh, demo of RStudio. Along the way, uh, in the course introduction, I had mentioned that the new version of RStudio has some new features. We'll take a look at one of the features. It's not crucial. If you don't have it, it's all right. We'll just take a look at that. Okay, so we'll do a quick uh, review of RStudio right now. Okay, so the RStudio interface, as you know, looks like this. Uh, so, uh, of course, initially, you're not going to see anything here. This is the code pane where, uh, or the data pane. Uh, this is the place where you will look at your data sets, if there are any data sets available, uh, if you put them in your workspace, or you can look at code from here, right? In fact, in this course, we're going to be using uh, this pane to, to look at code and to create code and to run code from and so on quite a bit. So in case you have not been using this a lot in the last semester, uh, this would be a good way to uh, start uh, to get refreshed. Okay, uh, so this is the place where you put your code. This is, of course, the area where you enter your commands. Uh, this is a place where there's a lot of useful things going on. First of all, you can use this as a file browser, right? So in the files tab, you see uh, the files and you can navigate your directory structure. Uh, plots, of course, is the place where all the, any charts that you plot, they appear here. Packages, this is where you manage all the installed packages, loading of packages, and so on. You already know that you can see all the installed packages on your system here. And uh, any loaded packages are shown with uh, check, right? So, so the packages which are not checked, that means those are available for loading, but you haven't loaded them yet, okay? And, uh, you know, all the packages listed here are packages that you have installed on your system, okay? So you can use this place to install new packages. Or, of course, you can enter the commands, uh, enter commands and get your new packages installed. So that's that. Uh, help, of course, is a place from where you can quickly get help on various R functions. Uh, we didn't make too much use of this in the last course, uh, but we probably will have to do a lot of it in this course, right? Because you're becoming now, uh, you're transforming yourselves from being uh, beginner users of R into what I would call intermediate R users. At the end of the course, you will definitely be an intermediate R user, which means that you can make good use of the help system. Okay, so those are all the features available here. Uh, and then of course here, you know, there are two tabs. One is the environment tab, which shows you all the objects you have available in your R workspace. For example, if you load a data frame, you would see that here. If you create a variable, you will see that here. So you'll see all of that here. And there's also the history tab here, which shows the history of all the commands that you have entered in your particular session, okay? Uh, notice that there's also this new thing that's available in the latest version of R. So you can do uh, import data sets directly from here, right? So if you want to load a data set, you don't necessarily have to uh, give the command read.csv. Uh, you can just use this and read the data, okay? So these are just small enhancements that they're making to the R Studio environment. Okay, uh, now you already know that uh, in R Studio, uh, you can load commands as files here. So, for example, if you want to load the command, uh, I can go to files and let's say there's a file here called session1code.r. In fact, this you'll be doing this shortly. Uh, so, I look at a file, an R file, which means it contains R code. If I just click on the R file there, it shows up here. Okay, and you already know that once the file is right here, you can actually run the code by just you know, positioning yourself in any particular line and then clicking the run button. And 
you know that code actually runs immediately so for example the code this uh, any line which contains uh, the first character being hash is a comment okay so that doesn't mean anything so I was actually positioned there and when I say run it's just a comment nothing uh, what it what our studio does is to go and execute the next available line of code which was uh, X is assigned the value 5 okay and that was uh, executed and you saw that this variable X showed up in your environment <coughs> right so now if I want to run the next line of code in fact after running a particular line of code automatically R positions itself to R studio positions itself to run the next line of code okay so it executed the line of code X is assigned the value 5 and it's now ready to run the next line of code Y is assigned the value of 6 right so if I now press enter again uh, it finished that and then it's gone to the next line of code and so on right of course this this code we'll be looking at in the slides shortly okay so that's a very convenient way to step through the code here in fact what I recommend you do is not to type code here uh, very much in the command area instead what I would recommend that you do when you're working with R is uh, create a new source pane you can do that by doing file new file uh, sorry file new file and then R script okay so you do that and you get a new tab here it's untitled one because you haven't saved the file and what I recommend as you try R is to type your code in here right so for example suppose I want to type the code x gets the value 10 right I type the code here and then I run the code from here okay and then type the next line of code here for example and then run the line of code here right the reason I suggest you do this is uh, after you you know suppose you make a mistake you go and change the code here and so on at the end of the session when you've got everything working then you've got all the code that you the successful lines of code that you wrote to get things working you've got it all well documented right here right so this is a workflow that I suggest rather than typing commands directly here okay I'm not saying you should never type your commands here of course you can type your commands here but uh, when you're doing a project or when you're doing some analysis that you might want to repeat or that you might want to save and submit or something it's a good idea to do the work right here okay at least that's the way I like to work okay so that's about using R studio and of course you already know the notion of a working directory right that is uh, you can uh, by default when you're re referencing any files or anything R looks in the d current working directory in your R environment and that's where it loads things from right otherwise you have to enter the full path right so uh, the best thing would be when you're doing a particular task to keep all the relevant R files, R code files and data files in one particular directory and set that as your working directory. How do you set it as your working directory? Well, suppose this is the place where I've got all the files in this particular directory. Okay, then all I have to do is to go there and then say more set as working directory. Okay, then that becomes the working directory for that particular session. Okay, so after that, uh, whatever work you do, uh, it's going to look there and pick up the files from there okay so that's what I recommend you do now in the previous course I had asked you to put all the course related files in one place and call that as your working directory okay uh, now in this course that may not be a great option because uh, every uh, you know every session that we do will end up with quite a few files and it might be a good idea for you to separate out each session into its own directory okay so if you do that then uh, you know all the related things will be in one place and you won't have one cluttered directory with uh, hundreds of files okay uh, so in fact what I recommend you do in R studio is to work with a new feature or not a new feature a feature that's new to you a feature of R studio called as a project okay now a project is nothing but a directory where you put all the related files okay so for example suppose uh, I'm not going to save this file I'm going to quit okay so I'm quitting our studio now see don't save so it's there so now let me go and run our studio again and what I'm going to do is to create a project so I've run our studio and I'm going of course our studio you know uh, it uh, 
it, it goes back to where it was in the last session, at least in the files and data files and so on. It opens them all up. So I'm going to say file new project. Okay. And I'm going to say, uh, of course, you can ask RStudio to create this new project in a new directory or in an existing directory. Okay. Uh, let's say a new directory. I'm going to say new directory and I say create for me an empty project. And it's saying, what is the name you want for the directory? I'm just going to call this name as session one uh, or big data session one. How about that? Okay. And it's saying, where do you want to put this new directory? Directory being it's a folder. I'm going to say, I'm going to pu put this into uh, my uh, big data session one. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put this this new project in this uh, folder, Big Data Session One. Okay, in uh, in fact, I'm going to create a subfolder of that. Uh, I'm going to call it our project. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put all the. Uh, that's where the project is going to be. So I say create project. Okay, so now notice what has happened. What has happened is that R has switched me into that new folder, into the new folder that I created, and it's created this file called big data session one dot R project. That's the project file. Don't do anything with that file. Just leave it. You can you can open the project by clicking on that file later from outside. You can do that. Okay. And now once you've created a project, you don't really have to do much. You just keep working in your project. All the work you do in your project will automatically get saved. Okay, and uh, next time you open the project, the situation will come back to exactly where it was uh, when you left it, right? So you don't have to really uh, put in too much effort. As long as you open the project, you will come back to exactly where you were within that project. Okay, all your uh, environment, uh, everything will come back to what it was. So I suggest that you start working in, in projects henceforth when you're working with RStudio. So for every session, might be a good idea for you to create a new project into a new folder. Of course, sometimes you may have to duplicate data files across these things, uh, but that's okay. Okay, so that's how you're going to work within R Studio using uh, projects. Okay, so that's a, just a quick uh, recap of R Studio. Uh, start working with R Studio using projects.